Dream Chick, and today we're going to be talking about... Um, 3D, because uh, a lot of things that people don't like about 3D is because the people that are shooting 3D don't know what they're doing. Now, why would you say that? Okay, here's here's what the people that really work in 3D will tell you. What are what is the secret to shooting good 3D? Shoot low and close. That's right, because um, there, we're going to show you. Uh, okay, we went to watch. Um, we did this past weekend where we got this idea. We were watching. We went and saw a modal version of, on Stranger Ties, and we noticed something. We noticed that they were uh, basically doing uh, swish pans, which is basically... That does not look good on 3D. Mm. And they were also doing, you know, focus in, focus out, focus in, focus out. And you can't do that. Okay, show them what is unique about a true 3D camera. So you got to walk towards the camera, and you're going to see something that's totally unique with a 3D camera. Yeah, look at that. It's it's in focus, and and I am I am I'm still in focus. I'm behind her. We are both in focus because it's a depth of field thing. And but in you know I move over to the side as she moves back. If she walks, slowly comes back. And, and <laughs> no, but if you do things, you can move to the right and the left. If you move to the right and the left it, with a camera in a stationary program, the, the, what happens is is that their cameras, a lot of the people are using 3D cameras. They're trying to capture action that's going around and are moving the camera back and forth. Well, see, and, part of it is like the actors and actresses that are working with the 3D, they understand. It's like... The camera stationary, you're going to and around the camera. Yeah, but right? the problem is though, it's like on Pirates of the Pirates, the camera was following the action. Well, you can, but it just gives the move the movements different. Yeah, but you can't follow, follow the action with a 3D camera because, uh, okay, I'm talking to some people over at Long Beach Grand Prix. They basically, a month earlier, they put 3D, they put Go cameras on their cars, the which GoPro. are really good cameras because everybody's using them, and we would get, use them if we can get our hands on them. But uh, they got, every time they go, they'd move them over, they move to the right, they move to the left, they'd go around corners, they, they, the picture went Phew! Because you can't swish pan with a 3D camera. Mm -hmm. Remember, there's two lenses? Yeah. And what happens is it basically, I mean, I'm lucky, our Panasonic cameras stop the filming when you do something too fast. It just stops. Yeah, it, it's, it does. It says and then it starts up again as soon as the pan is stopped. But it tells you you're panning too fast. And it will stop. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is, is they're reconverting cameras for 3D. And when they reconvert the camera for 3D, they're used to basically doing uh, pans that are right and left. You can't pan to the right and left. You cannot go up and down. A true 3D camera... Is, well, you can. It just yeah. doesn't work that well. No, but this is a 3D camera. This is, you know, look, I am I, I am totally in focus. She's totally in focus, you know. If I move my hand there, I was in focus as her hand... Just wave your hand, Lee. See? That's, she's in focus. We're both in focus. It's a depth of field thing. That's, you know, uh, a true 3D camera cannot zoom in and out. But part of it is your motion. Most of the people probably don't care what it was shot with. They just they look the at the okay. Right? They're all complaining oh. about a crappy looking picture. And they think it's because of 3D. No, it's not because of 3D. It's because they have people sitting behind the cameras. That I mean, okay. I got to tell you. I, I know there's an instance, and in I worked on a project where I can't tell you the name of the guy because they basically so he had he basically he he basically had work done on an eye, and he had an eye patch on when he was shooting a 3D movie. And he always loved, this was a hands-on director, he loved to stand behind, you know, sit there and look at the camera, you know, when the shooting was being done, he sat there and looked through the, you know, the side piece, they do have more than one eye piece on a thing, and he sat there and watched the film being done, he only had one eye which was usable. And then when he got, he got done, you know, instead of saying that he couldn't see the picture properly because he had one eye at the time, he said, God, 3D is a pile of crap. Mm -hmm. You have no perspective. Because, you know, this is 3D. It's why 3D works best coming at you, going away from you. It does not work bad, good panning. But you can pan with a 3D camera, and it will be in focus. I mean, this camera will be in focus at the end of a football field. It'll look like ants, but it will be in, it will be in focus one foot away from it, 
a hundred foot away from it. Mm -hmm. That is a 3D camera. But here's the thing that we, we discovered when we were looking at pirates. There were far more people doing the digital work than there were doing the photography. <laughs> There's a lot of people doing digital yeah. work. Uh, the whole picture is a back-ended movie. The whole picture. It, and, and if you go, when in the world is back-ended? <laughs> Well, it, it means, means they do it afterwards. They do it afterwards because they put the they put the three D stuff stuff in on I don't know probably ninety percent of the picture maybe was done in a in a lab or done in a control room somewhere, mm -hmm. but it was not done. So they used a they used a converted they used a camera that was basically I think they said probably uh, cameras cameras which we know the people that did the work on them, mm -hmm. but after seeing. Pirates, I would not use that company or cameras, cameras, because uh, what happened was that um, they were doing this, you know, with the cameras, you know, all of a sudden, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm standing here, I'm, I'm in focus, she's out of focus, then all of a sudden, I'm out of focus, she's in focus, and well, did then you, did you I'm think in part of that was the intent of what they wanted no, you to focus on? No, it was a screw up. They didn't realize. Well, you're thinking about when they were all at the table. They're all, but no, but they're also in some of the scenes. They're at the table. They're going. But every time there was a two shot, one person in front, one person in back, they would go. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. This is what it was like. It was watching the movie. Whoosh, 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 as they're saying, "Okay now, whoosh, okay now, whoosh, okay now," whoosh. and then somebody discovered in the editing, "Oh God, that looks atrocious." So all of a sudden, they went from doing this to. Cut to her, cut to me, cut to her, cut to me, cut to her, cut to me, and then they got then the director probably quick, God, that looks bad. And then they went whoosh, 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 whoosh. and then that looked bad, so cut to her, cut to me, cut to her, cut to me. See what happens when you got a cinematographer watching the movie with you? Yeah, I know. I used to be I used to be going to remember the organization, but it's what's killing three D is that the people that are filming three D don't know what the hell they're doing. You cannot be out of focus. This is this is the most perfect. Okay, um, in the early days of cinema, okay, it's like um, you know what film noir is. Film noir is the camera basically does nothing, and you're doing, and you're you're sitting there, and you're, you know, it's it's this. Um, you know, look at Robert Mitchum. A lot of this stuff. Robert Mitchum will, you know, he'll. But this is film noir. That thing does not move. It does not move. Actors come into the scene, actors leave the scene. Actors leave the scene, actors come back into the scene. But they're wandering in and out of the... It's what the French call the mezzanine scene. It's all the action takes place within the scene. That thing sets exactly where it is, and it sets on a, a lens that basically it's like... A, you say Robert Mitchum in one of the things he's... You know, he's basically being very sullen, and he's... And he's basically the, you know, uh, the woman that's with you, I think Jane Greer was most of the, most of the time, and he'd be walking back and forth, and then he would, and then he would, and uh, that, that's, that's no more. The camera does not budge from where it's at, but they're being massively critical of, of, uh, of pirates, since the movie was almost all back-ended, if they had taken... And if they had taken an ordinary camera, just shot it in 2D, and then back-ended it to begin with, a camera can, okay, I mean, I, I back-end some of our stuff, because, you know, the problem is, like, sometimes we have a really, we have some problem, we should know, because we're bad weather, so we do back-end some stuff. And um, uh, sometimes I will un-2D, un-3D it, and 2D it, so I can get a better quality picture. <clears throat> but, um, if... The, an ordinary camera can move to the right and the left. Mm -hmm. When you back end it, it doesn't. It's not a swish pan when you back end it, because the, the 3D itself, if uh, you know, I mean, like I said, this camera, if I move it really sharp, real quickly, it won't. It will stop running. But if you're using, uh, you're using a converted camera to make it a 3D, the converted camera still believes it's a regular camera, and when you do like this, it looks like a blur. That blur does not exist if you back in the picture. Mm. And since the pictures are all being, every action movie you see is back in it, all of them. And uh, I mean, I've sat there and I grumped. I mean, I saw that thing twice. I saw it in IMAX. And I saw, but she realized, okay, 
the some of the things look far better in IMAX than they did in the digital 3D, right. and they look better in digital 3D than IMAX, and the reason was was the screen size. Mm -hmm. Well, part of it is well, actually, we're gonna that's we're gonna talk show. about that's a whole new we're gonna talk in the topic, but we, the the smaller a smaller a 3D picture gets in digital size, the better the quality of the picture. And there was less problem because she did notice. Uh, well, she did notice that uh, some of the. Well, she noticed in one scene at their table when he when the food is all better when he tosses a a, a, a Danish up into the sky. Cream you know, puff. Cream puff. It, it looked better. And uh, um, and also and there's another thing about the about the stuff is that there is a there's a format war going on on glasses. Which glasses should be used? And the basic statement on which glasses should be used in the theater is, is that, you know, you should not use. Uh, I, don't have, I don't have a red cayenne set here. We do have a red cyan. I like to call it cayenne. I can't. I, I, I put it this way. I've been screwing up for 60 years. I'll probably screw up for another 60 if I was to live that long. But the big hang-up on the red cayenne is that it darkens the picture. What happened when we lifted our glasses up in the theater? Oh, it was brighter. It was, well, it, yeah. yeah. Because they're polarized lenses, just like sunglasses mm -hmm. are polarized, they darken and take out the high points and the highlights. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons when you shoot in 3D, you need a lot more light to mm -hmm. compensate for it. And the more light you have, the, uh, the, the bigger, the more information is in the picture, the more information there is in the picture. The larger the picture size. The larger the, the, larger the picture is. And, and um, if you watch the credits, stay and watch the credits on all these 3D movies. You'll see 3D video, 3D video assistant, which means they're watching everything on a 3D video at the same time. Those pictures are like 10 times bigger than the film video, than the film they're shooting. Mm -hmm. Because it, the, the brighter the picture, the more information is. And then... They said, well, but God awful, wasn't, wasn't Pirates an awfully dark picture? Yeah, if you put a polarizing filter over the top of it, it's dark. They're shooting in broad daylight, folks. Mm -hmm. They put a polarizing filter over it, and then they give you polarized glasses to look at the polarized picture with, mm -hmm. which, makes it darker. Even, which make it look darker. You know, and, um, you know, um, but if you're going to make a picture look, okay, uh, if you're using red cayenne, you get, uh, you, you basically your eyes are adjusting and making the thing darker so you can see it. What they're doing is taking the red cayenne out, which is the cheaper form of the glasses, which costs God nothing to make, and replacing it with 10 to $120, $160 polarized glasses, which basically... Oh, the active shutter. Yeah, the active <laughs> shutter. It, it changes it for you without your eyes doing it. Mm -hmm. So... But you're still taking the same picture and making it darker for your eyes. So as a as a consumer, I mean, we got, we we, got, we we did spend. I mean, we spent a hell of a lot of money to go see those two movies. That's true. To think about it. Yeah. We saw it twice. Yeah, and we spent oh we spent we spent a lot of money to go see two see that pirate thinks we can do. We've done three reviews on it already. So, mm -hmm. but um, you're you're getting a darker picture because of darker glasses and it's costing you an extra premium for those glasses. It's going to cost less of a premium if they go back to the way stereographic video was meant, stereographic film was meant to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're going to get a dark picture, do I want a dark picture? And a set of glasses is going to cost $160, which we did actually have, we had six sets of glasses on. Mm -hmm. Six different sets of glasses. Some glasses, uh, the, some of the glasses were narrow, they were the um, Gooner. And so we had uh, we had uh, Marshawn, mm -hmm. and then we had um, uh, we had what was it the other company? Um, Calvin Klein. Calvin Kynes. You know we had but we had different versions of the glasses, and some glasses got more had more definition. Some glasses, were, you know, showed color better. Mm -hmm. But the problem was, is that one it, of the things that was in common was they all made the picture darker. All of them made it darker. And you're going to pick out a hundred and forty dollar pair of glasses to make your picture darker, or a ten cent pair of glasses to make your picture darker. You know, um, you pay you pay a five dollar premium to go see a three D movie. Well, you know, part of the challenge right now is people cannot get the glasses anyway. They can't get the glasses, but uh, but if 
Uh, I, I talk to the people. I mean, I could tell you what these things cost to make, but I'd probably get in trouble if I told you. I talked to the guy. I talked to a person from China whose company manufactured glasses. He told me what they actually cost. In bulk. In bulk. In we, large bulk. You have to buy ten thousand, a minimum of ten thousand at a time to get that price. But you're getting screwed, folks. I mean, you are really getting clipped. You know. <laughs> but it's not just those glasses because that same. <laughs>